गुड मॉर्निंग फ्रेंड्स वेलकम अगेन टू दिस वर्चुअल क्लास फॉर द स्टूडेंट्स ऑफ फिश एंड इनलैंड फिशरीज सेमेस्टर फोर ऑफ जूआलजी आई एम हियर विथ ए न्यू टॉपिक एज रिक्वेस्टेड बाई द स्टूडेंट्स दिस न्यू टॉपिक इज लैकेस्टराइन फिशरीज दिस वर्चुअली मीन्स द फिशरीज ऑफ लेक्स इन इंडिया फिशरीज ऑफ लेक्स नॉट मच इज नोन अबाउट दिस नाइदर इट हैज बीन वाइडली इन्वेस्टिगेटेड Usually the lakes are <clears throat> bigger in dimensions than reservoirs but unfortunately they do not support much of the total fisheries output of the country usually they are of natural origin and <clears throat> mainly located in the himalayan region and peninsular india the river systems which virtually includes this these lakes are roughly they are they can be listed as indus river system jhelum chenab river ravi satluj bhagirathi all almost all lakes are liquid, uh, situated in the basins of these rivers and some others also many of them are in uh, naturally in origin and many of them had are man made also in the natural lakes which you might be knowing uti kodai canal devonian and elephanta these are some natural lakes of much more importance <clears throat> this lakes has been classified by welch 1950 you might be knowing the name of welch the great limnologist who has wrote a very vast book on the limnology and he has classified the lakes in the year 1952 according to welch oligot these lakes are of three types mainly one is called oligotrophic second is eutroph eutrophic and third is dystrophic remember the names oligotrophic eutrophic and dystrophic the names are not new to you because you all know these terms while studying the ecology these lakes among these oligotrophic lakes are relatively deep one and known to be less productive because they have a poor nutritional status and so there is a low phytoplankton count because they are low in phytoplankton count obviously they do not support the major most of the fishes because phytoplankton constitutes one of the most preferred food for fishes and so they they are known to be less productive second is eutrophic eutrophic lakes though they are much more productive in comparison to other ones but they are shallow lakes and become warmer since they are warmer they support the phytoplanktons and these lakes eutrophic lakes have rich phytoplanktons and in india this eutrophic 
lakes are very common. <coughs> Though the number of fishes are found in these are numerous, but commercially important fishes are less. Not so much. And like, uh, the last one is dystrophic fishes. These dystrophic fishes are not known for the fishery resources. They contain high level of humic acid and not only for fishes, but they are virtually unsuitable for any organism to grow. Because level of oxygen is also lacking there. So these dystrophic lakes do not support the, any of the organisms to grow and so they are of not any economic importance. Besides these oligotrophic, eutrophic and dystrophic lakes, these lakes have been broadly been uh, classified in two groups from practical point of view. These two groups include one which do not freeze. As you might be knowing that most of the lakes which are on uh, in Himalayan region and some of the peninsular region of India, there are many lakes like Ular Lake, Renuka in Himanchal Pradesh, Bhimtal, Nainital, Uti, Kodaikalan, Kodai canal, they do not freeze. So they are much more productive and offers a lucrative indigenous as well as exotic fishes like sunu trouts, brown trouts, masir, crucian, uh, crucian carps, and many of the minor carps, Indian minor carps. So in these, they are very good resources for fisheries and they give a group good crop that are marketed and an, one another is which partially or fully free, freeze during winter and some of them which are uh, situated at, at high altitude they <coughs> fully freeze Partial freezing is observed in Dal Lake, Kishansar, Visenar, Tarsar, Marcel. These are some ex examples of the, the pieces, uh, the lakes that do freeze either fully or partially in throughout the year. So obviously they do not support many of the pieces particularly the indigenous species. These fishes are harbored with many of the trout species and they do not have their much contribution in Indian fisheries resources. <clears throat> the fisheries of these lakes roughly includes some of the major carps and mainly large catfish like Valago mistus, many minor carps of Lavio group, clupids, murals are the main fisheries of these lakes, <clears throat> but it supports mainly <clears throat> the trout species like snow trout and mahseed, tar putitura. Particular species is highly supported by these lakes <coughs> and India. <coughs> this mahseed is a very common <coughs> fish appreciated in most of the high altitude regions as well as some of the southern peninsular India you may say. Common among uh, most common species in all, if you uh, have to name 
one species for the lacustrine fisheries it is the common carp cyprinus carpio and some of the minor carps they are the main contributions of this lacustrine fisheries and they economically make it viable in past 4 3 4 years some of the research stations has also been established by the indian council of agricultural research these stations are mainly lo located in kashmir and in bhimtal nainital they <coughs> are investigating the possibilities of growing some of the trout species like snow trout and brown brown trout <clears throat> much of the work has been <clears throat> conducted i had an opportunity to see the culture station and research station in bhimtal because one of my friend was there <clears throat> so i had been there to see and they are very they have very success, successfully cultured the fish species of the these uh, rainbow trout brown trout and snow trout and they have introduced and they are getting uh, a good culture practice there and good um, return economic return from these lakes <clears throat> now the seeds in these lakes are either come from the natural resources but now the practice in india has also been started to produce commercially the natural seeds of the species desired by them but these are highly highly variable there is not a plan there is not a single species which can be cultured in almost all of the lacustrine fisheries centers so due to this a common pattern is not being possible and it is difficult for one research station to feed on the different requirements of different places if you come to the a, a, a state wise statistics in jammu and kashmir there are seven lacustrine um, lakes himachal 5 uttarakhand 4 sikkim 1 arunachal 2 Manipur one and Tamil Nadu one. So all together there are twenty three <coughs> lacustrine fisheries stations, or you may say lake. These all cover about the twenty thousand five hundred hectares area, and it is difficult to have a total a total statistics on the total productivity of these ponds because these are highly variable due to <coughs> variable climatic factors and nutritional factors so the productivity of these lakes are cannot be statistically has not yet been possible to produce any statistics data however individual statistics data on the production of each of them is available and <clears throat> these the contribution of these lacustrine fisheries in indian fisheries scenario is not too much however there is a need to go for the intensive researches and find out the factors and particularly suitable suitability of the particular fisheries species which are commercially viable and can be grown in uh, um, in a balanced way and in a productive way in each of them however i will again emphasize that it's not possible it has not been possible only due to the variation in their climatic factors nutrition nutritional factors and other factors that affect the total species productivity with all this i 
um, with all this summary, I, to tell, uh, I complete this lecture on Lakesh Shrine Fisheries today. In next day, we will come. I will come with the Shrine Fisheries that will um, be much, be of much importance to you, and you must know about that also. Thank you very much, friends.